And now the Fairhaven Acushnet Cable Magazine has a real sweet treat for you. We brought our Cable 2 cameras inside of one of the largest candy manufacturing operations in southern New England. This is Dorothy Cox's Candy, and we're going to go now and speak with the owner of the chain, Mr. Francis Cox. Okay, so how did how did you get started? How did Dorothy Constance begin, and when did it start? I was born into it, but it started back in 19, well, 58 years ago. I'm not sure the exact year. I think 28. But my aunt started making candy at home, where she had a job in an office in a mill, and she used to take it down to the downtown New Bedford, which at that time was a New Bedford dry goods store, which is now known as Stewart, before it was a star store, and sell it there on weekends, Saturdays. And everybody seemed to like it, so she left her other job and she opened her first store in New Bedford up near Court, on Court Street. And unfortunately, she passed away in 1944, and my father, who took it over, was running it. And we were there in that location up until 1957 when we had a fire, and then we've been up here ever since, right here on Huddleston Avenue. Mr. Cox, how many different types of candy do you have here, and what are some of the most popular brands that you sell? We manufacture well over 100 different types of candies, from soft centers to nougats and chewy caramels to the nuts and the barks. But the most popular one is our almond butter crunch, which we have sent throughout most of the world at different times of the year, especially at Christmas time. That is a the biggest mail item that we have is our butter crunch, and we do a very good job with it. Exactly how many Dorothy Cox stores are there in the area? At present, we have three stores. This is being the home base store in Fairhaven. We also have one in New Bedford on Union Street and one in Fall River on South Main Street. At the present, there are only there three, but in a couple of years, there may be one or two more. We're not sure. This store in the Fairhaven is the main nucleus of the of the Dorothy Cox producing branch. Maybe you can tell us a little about the candy making process. What's going on in the back over there? All right, in the back right now, they're getting ready to manufacture a soft center cream type chocolate, and that goes through a series of beaters before it's ready for the enrolled. And once it's enrolled, it has a bottom put on the chocolate, then it goes through a bath. My kids, when they were small, used to call it a car wash, and you'll see it, the chocolate will go through and get covered, mm -hmm. and then get marked. But different types of centers, we do different things, like nougats and caramels, we have to cook maybe a day before we cover, before we dip them, because they have to sit or they have to get hard. Our uh, creams are usually done the same day we make them. Uh, so it's a process where you don't, you know, you can't do everything the same day. If you're gonna make nougats, you gotta plan a couple of days ahead, because we like to have them sit a couple of days before we cover them. The equipment that you'll see is much more modern than what they used to do years ago with the hand dipping, but it puts out a better piece of candy and it's much more efficient and cost, cost worthy for us to use this type of equipment. Now how about the prices of candy? Has the, the prices been escalating over the past few years, past decades maybe? Not until the early, around the 40s and early 50s, they were f somewhat down, you know, and I mean down, dollar or so a pound. Uh, what has made them go up, of course, is the cost of sugar and the cost of chocolate itself. You've got to understand that the raw product chocolate, the cocoa bean, has grown in an area of the world that's 20 degrees north of the equator and 20 degrees south of the equator. So it's a very limited area where we can receive the cocoa beans. And different things like wars or revolutions have affected the price of the cocoa bean. For another big effect on the price of candy is packaging. Packaging has improved candy. Packaging has improved over the years to make the candy look better. And of course, it's easier for us to package. And that plays a cost in it. And that also helps sell the product also. Mm -hmm. But the main ingredients are sugar and cocoa, not cocoa powder, but cocoa beans itself. And that's what we basically worry about price on. And the average piece of candy, how much time is involved in between the start and the finish process? Like I mentioned before, some are a matter of a couple of days between the cooking process, which may vary from a half hour to an hour. The smaller the batch, the faster it cooks, but it varies, like I told you, on the different products. Uh, the cream is just put in a mixer and mix with corn syrup and that and formulate it with warm water and, and it's done that way. Yeah, just one final question, Mr. Cox. You know, a lot of people must come up to you now and then and say that candy is not good for you or it's alleged to be bad for you. Now, how do you argue this fact? 
you know, that's if you eat a great deal of it at a time. Uh, one or two pieces of even a half pound or a pound within a couple of days or something isn't really going to affect you. I'm a habitual candy eater. Mm -hmm. I eat candy morning, noon, and night, and I eat it what I call unconsciously. I realize I don't, and I don't realize I'm doing it. When I'm working around it, I just nibble all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I forget myself, but I find, you know, nothing wrong with it. Except uh -huh. it does put a little weight on if you're like me. <laughs> Well, we'd like to thank our guest on tonight's edition of Fairhaven Cable Magazine, Mr. Francis Cox. I'm Jerry Rivett. Let's go back to the studio now.